Hello, everyone. I want to take this opportunity to show you uh, with drawing with just a pen, a micron pen. I'm using a micron five um, just to show you that even if you're not very good at drawing, which a lot of people tend to complain that they're not, which is fine. Just look at how I'm just taking my time to draw a semi square or a semi rectangle, depending on how you see the shape. And I'm just going to draw a door, a door that leads to something at a, at a barn or a warehouse or a factory. It really doesn't matter because I want to show you how to create something um, that has a lot of texture using a lot of lines. But basically, I just want to show you the simplicity of just using a straight ink drawing uh, to do a nice pen and ink wash. Now, I think this subject, even though it's kind of quirky, is just a door, a rusted door with a lot of rust wood and metal. I, I think it lends to an excellent way um, for pen and ink sketching because it has an abundance of textures. But not only that, it's a very forgiving drawing that it doesn't have to be like precise in any way. It, it just has to have a, a kind of a feel to it. And I want you to take note of how I'm very slowly in real time um, etching out this drawing. And you can see where when I was starting out, I made a slight mistake in sizing. But I'm not going to let that stop me because I'll use it as part of the texture in the wood of the door. So again, even if you can't draw, this shows you that even mistakes can be turned into something, you know. And again, this is a very highly forgiving subject. Um, no need for precision. If all the elements are in place, you have a fair bit of leeway in the painting. And to start with this initial sketch, um, I'm just going to draw it so you can see it. And I'm drawing it in micron pen, no pencil line, because I'm not looking for the artwork. I'm just looking to show you how you can use the pen and a few lines and some scribbles just to get some dots to give some texture. So I'm really just drawing it so that later on I can know where the hinges are, where the metal attachments are. And again, you could be making this up. It doesn't have to be anything real, but it should be drawn from real life. You should have some sense of the subject so that it touches on a lot of the characteristics that would make it seem like it's something real. Uh, and I'm telling you already, it's, it's not. It's just a hinge door, small little hinge door with lots of bolts, lots of metal, that later I'll paint it and turn it into rust. So right now as I'm drawing, I'm just marking off where all the various points are, where all the metal screws are gonna be. And then I'm kind of adding a little left-hand side shadow to them. And now I'm going into wood grain or wood slats, like as if the door itself was made up of a bunch of cut pieces of wood um, that are somehow held together. Uh, so this is what makes this easy. And this to me is what makes art fun. Where you have the ability to just let your imagination flow. Now this line that I'm making right now is going to later be a shadow of, of, of where the door opens and closes. It's an old structure. So there's lots of room to be creative and be imaginative. So I'm just thinking about, okay, how would all of this hold together? What metal pieces would also aid in the, in the, in the holding of this so that it, it, it looks like it has a stability? You know, this is really, really what I'm looking at. And now right now I'm drawing which will be like the bottom part of this area of the door. And then I'm going to take artistic license and add some other wood elements above to the right and below it just to help give it some sense of stability. So here again, I'm still just working on the hinges. Now, I know a lot of people don't like for me to talk, but I don't know any other way to describe to you what I'm doing other than in words. And if you want to, 
please feel free to turn the volume down and just watch the video as it unfolds in just the drawing element. But I'm really just trying to, to kind of keep you involved and show you that um, it's, it's just a matter of just looking at an image or looking at a subject, even if it's in your mind, and then just piecing it together so that it makes sense. So rather you're looking at it as a drawing or you're looking at it and me describing it, the painting has its own voice and it should have its own words. So as it develops, which is far from finishing right now, you know, you should be able to have it speak what it is, what it represents. So here now I'm just playing around, you know, looking at little areas and spots to try to just determine where I'm going to make my my marks. Uh, that's like the handle, like a little handle for you to reach under and grab it so you can open the door. Again, just trying to think realistically. A little three-dimensional line there. And now I'm starting to add in some texture on the wood. So... This is just going to take a few. So why don't I why don't I stop talking now unless I have to so that you can just kind of see how I take the, the pen and just very sporadically just drawing little lines here and there for the cracks and the lines and the texture in the wood and the darkened areas and so forth and so on. So why don't we just sit back and take a look, see it where this develops. I love this part of the process of drawing when it slowly starts to build itself into something. Even though we're just a few minutes in, it's interesting how that semi-rectangular type square has now manifest itself into a, an actual piece with still more work to go. I'm just putting some dots and shadows. Anybody can do this. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned artist, if you're just starting out, it's, it's just lines and indications and you know, there's nothing straight, no ruler needed. Now you see I'm darkening that piece because I want that to be a distinct separation between the right and the left of that dark line. There'll be more of that. But I'm building it up nice and slow. I'm not trying to rush. Still trying to add little doodads here or there. Make it interesting. I really do love this process. If I may, line width, line darkness, line value, it helps in the drawing. Because if you notice, not everything is the same darkness. Some lines are bolder than others, while... Some lines are longer and shorter, but all of that adds to the weathering, to the texture. And it just helps the eye read separations and planks and, and even texture in and of itself. Still using the number five. Just going over some areas. Some lines run left and right. Some lines run up and down. 
And again, that helps too. That's me marking off where I know it's going to be very bold and black, but that'll come later. Just giving myself a little guide for later. Love using the shadows to thicken up the bolts, to thicken up the metal, thicken up the wood. I like using thin and tapered lines to help add that texture. Now, when I shot this video, I didn't want to talk during it, so I shot the video first, and now I'm just doing a talk over. But it's actually the same time. It's just, just different. I kind of like the draw, listening to music, so. And that's my problem, is making sure the, the book remains straight underneath the, uh, the camera shot. Now, just for you to take a look at where I am right now and to where I'm going to be going. I believe at this point right now, I'm looking for a, a number eight micron. So that I could start adding in some of the uh, thicker, bolder sh shadows and lines. And there I have it. So now I'm just going to start coloring in those areas I was telling you about earlier. And don't worry about perfection. It really is underrated. It's a drawing. So it technically should have a few imperfections to help with the reality of how it was created. Now, for those of you who can't draw, you could always um, trace this image if you want it. I'm, I'm, I have no problem with that. I'm... Not that type of person where I'm anti-tracing or anti-using a grid or anything that's going to help you to develop your skill set. I'll freehand it. You can just trace over my lines. I give you permission. I'm not looking for these to be hung in the Louvre. <laughs> um, I have been thinking lately about a a drawing book, but I don't think I'm not good yet to even be doing that, but you never know. So you see how now that, that bold line definitely shows you the opening to the door. So even if you didn't know what it was or where it was at this point, it, it has a feel or a look like it can move, like, you know, it can open. And now again, just playing with some areas of shadow and uh, some bold lines of texture. And you can make as, as many or as few of the wood grains as you wish and use any any type of uh, strokes that you like, that you think will help represent uh, weathered and texture. So that's all I'm doing. A few dots here, a few dashes there, some irregular lines here, some bold lines there, some tapered lines. It's, it's using a combination of all. Using a little pointillism on occasion, a little stippling. Some squiggles. I love this. And in just a matter of a few moments, 
We have something that could be painted. Now, at this point, my mind is telling me that while I could stop here, I, I just don't like the negative space uh, to my right and below uh, what I've drawn. So I'm going to extend my imagination a little bit. And uh, you're going to see me start to develop just below the the door and a little bit to the right so that when I wash it, I can have that vignette flow of color and, and just kind of, you know, encompass some of the page a little bit. So I'm also thinking about that as I'm drawing. So even though I haven't done it yet, I, I've already made up my mind somewhere at this point that, that I'm going to do that. So I'm just working with what I have, where I am right now, before I just execute that part where I extend some areas just to kind of fill the page just a little bit more than what it is. It just looks a little off with the negative space. And the negative space is the white area around my drawing. So here is where I make the commitment. I'm just processing it as a thought. I'm not afraid or I'm not going to do it. I am going to do it. I'm just visualizing it before I actually attempt it. Making sure my book is straight. And I'm just going to dive in in a second or two. See, like here I'm just saying, okay, so I'll continue some of those above lines of wood. And, and just see how it plays itself. See, nice and easy. Nothing really long yet. But see, by just doing this, it, 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 to me, it just balances the page out just a little bit more. So even if my original thought wasn't to go this far or this deep, I'm here now. So let's jump. Let's see what happens. See? So, so even though it's not a lot and it doesn't really mean much to you as the viewer, but to me, it satisfies my artistic nature. It satisfies what I what I would say is my vision of, of something. See how I quickly cut that plank a little darker. See? And now I'm looking to the right and I'm just going to pull a few lines. Nothing major, nothing, not a lot. Just to kind of lead you over that way just a little bit more. The center is what it is. That's my goal. And I think that the drawing came out quite nice. The next video I'm going to make, I'll wash it. But I'm thinking before I wash it, I might want to play with my uh, graphite aquarelle pencils so you can kind of get an idea of the monochromatic nature of graying these boards and door down before I even add one ounce of color. So I believe that's what we'll do next, but that'll be in the next video. Take care until then.